Hi there. God bless you all in the name of Jesus. And welcome back to Relationship Love with Kunle. And I'm your friend, School of Counseling and Personal Finding, Stephen Adekunle Adeboye. God bless you all in the name of Jesus. You're welcome back to our second live session. And tonight we're going to be having Mrs. Amezi Obudezie. And she's going to be um, delving into a very, 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 very deep topic, which I'm going to be sharing right now, the demise of man. The demise of man is ego. The demise of man. A very deep topic there that time. I'm believing God to help us with already. It's ego. So I'm just going to pin it now so that. Yes. Okay. Please kindly send in your questions already. Send in your questions already. And our guest speaker will attend to them. God bless you. Okay. So we are, are we, let's go. So amazing moment. Um, I can't wait to have this session with um, my sister, my friend. We've been, we've been having back and forth recently, but we thank God for his grace. So, um, hello there, how are you? God bless you. Let me just um, add you. Okay, okay, you are here already. Wow. So, um, this is amazing. God bless you, celebrate you. Wow. Hello. Hello <laughs> God bless you. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. Good evening, <laughs> sir. How are you? Good evening. I, I was watching. I was watching the World Cup match between Argentina and um, uh, ah. Australia. <laughs> so I, I had to just for my time, and they just started the second half. So I had to. <laughs> wow, that is beautiful. So and what did you make of it? Very <laughs> oh wow. wow! I'm so glad. That was good. Is well. Wow, wow. But, but the thing is, thing is, yes, the good thing is my favorite team, they are, they are winning as we speak, so I can uh, oh. confront this life session with um, the right mood. <laughs> wow, that is wonderful. That is so beautiful. Uh, God bless oh, you, man. Good to see you. We thank God everybody's fine. How are you doing, sir? God is good. It's well. It's well. We thank God for it's great. So let's just um, can you can you just um, send this invite to people? Uh, let, let's just sure. share with people sure. that uh, yeah, so that they can they can join us while we we look at get started. You can also do that at your end as well too. Absolutely, I'm doing that. I'm doing that right now. Yeah. Okay, great, great. Okay. Yeah, so... <laughs> I um, know the the World Cup. People really play. Oh, yeah. <laughs> honestly, honestly. Such a, an exciting uh, event, you know? Yes, yes, yes. You guys, you guys, um, uh, you guys left earlier today. You left the, you exited the competition. United States. The United States, yes. It looks like yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> no it's problem. Well, it's just, you know, people take it so seriously. Yeah, well, it's actually um, very serious. It is. Mm. It is quite serious, yes. Okay, is. so we thank God for his grace. And um, let's just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for mm -hmm. your daughter, my sister. I pray for wisdom upon her in the name of Jesus. We pray for Amen. people that will be joining us physically and people that will be connecting later. We pray that your grace and peace and mercy will be with them in the name of Jesus. And this Amen. session will change our lives forever. 
In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. 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 So I've already pinned down the information um, for those who, who have questions. I'm sure they're going to be joining us and we will just kick start. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. This can be some questions. Okay, I think we should just get started. And um, whilst we get started, I'm sure people will, you know, join up and all that. So, absolutely. Yeah. So we are looking at the demise of man, his ego. Wow. Mm -hmm. A very deep topic there. That's right, sir. I didn't know if you wanted to to um, give any prelim preliminary talk. I didn't want to just jump in. So if okay, if we are looking at um, man as a man or man as um, you know male and female now. We're looking at man as male and female. So we're talking mm -hmm. about man in the generic sense. Yeah, yeah. So male yeah. and female. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I think. Um, it's a very, very sensitive one. This topic, I believe in my experience as a counselor, is a dimension that has come up with a very sensitive, it's a lot of sensitivity. Because God has created us in um, different ways. He created man with his ego. He created woman now with our own ego. And from my understanding, egos can be bruised, egos can be managed, egos can be imbibed, uh, and um, the 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 who is this person? Yeah, I hope it's not this. Um, okay, <laughs> are you serious right now? <laughs> is it? Wow. We are done. Are you having an issue with someone? Okay, so um, maybe we can block that. I yeah. usually just go. Mid <laughs> yeah, midi ball um, three. How are you? How are you doing? God bless you. I saw you in the session earlier. You're, you're welcome. All right, so um, a lot of people really do not understand what ego is all about. Men yes. have allowed this thing called ego to affect their relationships with um, their wives. It has affected their relationship um, with um, their children. It has even affected their relationship with God as well. I think we are in a dimension whereby, um, we're in a dispensation where people need to really sit down and understand where their source is from. Yes, sir. Where their source is from. Um, 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 I, 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 there's a scripture I'm trying to remember now. The Bible said that um, man who God has created, he made a little lower than the angels. Mm -hmm. And that if everything goes according to plan, we are supposed to, you know, judge the angels yes. ourselves. Mm -hmm. But right now, we don't even have what it takes to understand who we are. That's right. Self-evaluation, self-realization is a problem. Yes. I, I believe that that talk on um, nobody is perfect 
I don't think is actually the correct thing to say because we can grow into perfection. We can get better. And just as I tell people that um, if you are doing 10 things that are wrong and you decide to stop one of them, you have become perfect to that one that you have stopped. That's right. And sir. So you can That's gradually right. work on, you know, on yourself and then slash everything down. That's right, Ego sir. can make you not to apologize to somebody you think you should actually apologize to. Ego yes. can make you not to say thank you to the person you think you should mm -hmm. say thank you to. Yes, sir. Ego can make you not to um, use the word please That's to right. the person you think you should, you know. So these three, these three words, please, sorry, and thank you. And thank you. They are major summations yes, sir. to the word ego. If I want you to talk about ego, these three words are the things that should come to your mind. Please, That's right. sorry, and thank you. That's right, sir. Absolutely. Being able to say sorry, you know, to people, your wife, your husband, even to your own children. That's right. You have promised that you're going to get a um, um, box of candy, you know, for your son or your daughter, and then you probably forgot because you, 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 you had a busy day or something, and then you come back home and your, your son or daughter is like, Daddy, where's my box of candy? I'm like, um... Uh, I'll get it for you tomorrow. Because mm. you don't want to tell him or her you are sorry. You just, mm. you know, want to say, okay, I'll get it for you tomorrow. And she's expecting more. And then you get angry. What's the meaning of that? I said, I'll get it tomorrow. Exactly. And then your wife is like, oh, you, you, you really do not need to talk to her like that. You should have just told her you're sorry, you know, and you'd be like, what? I should mm. apologize to my own daughter, to my own son that I'm sorry. Why? Mm. My father <laughs> never apologized to to, to, to me or to my That's siblings it. for anything that they've done, even if they were around. So why should I do that? So this ego is, um, the ego thing cuts across all borders now. It's a challenge, it's a problem. And we, we need to really, really understand how to apply it, when to apply you know, it, why we are applying it. We must also understand the intentions. Some people can mm -hmm. just say, oh, sorry, it's not, it's not sorry you need. Okay, sorry, it's fine. And then, but true. deep down, the person is not even apologetic. Yes. Yes. This same true. ego too played out several times in the Bible. In the Bible. If you trace it, if, even if you trace it down, you know, even to the Old Testament, you will see this same ego, this same ego. Okay. I, I, for me, I just believe that pride is a little part of ego. Yes. Absolutely. Pride Absolutely. is a little part of ego. Because, yes, because there's a difference between pride, arrogance, and um try to remember the other word now. There's a difference between um pride, um, um there's a difference between ego now, pride right. and arrogance. Yes, yeah, ego, pride, true. and arrogance. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. Having 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 an ego, there's a part of ego that deals with just self confidence. You just have That's the self confidence to know who you are. You have a belief system. You have a, a you know a huge respect for yourself. You just know that even if people are not getting things done, I will go there and get the job done. I will achieve certain results. Yes. That is ego. Pride is just a high way of self evaluation, and arrogance is a stupid way of self assessment. You know, so um, I, I think these are these are some areas we really need to really, you know, um, address and all. So Absolutely. I don't know if I've um, really made sense, you know, in some of my submissions and all. Oh, this is great. This is. I think that I think that you have gone to the to the cocoa of the matter. You know, the the bottom yeah. the bottom pot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. To the to the crux of the matter in addressing mm -hmm. your definition of ego, and I thank you so much yeah. for that, sir. Thank so, you so much. first of all, I, absolutely, I want to say thank you to you. Mm -hmm. Now, I have to figure out what exactly. I sometimes I call you brother Steve. <laughs> sometimes I remember that you have another name, Kule, uh, brother <laughs> Kule. So I'm like, okay, yeah. which one do you prefer? Is it brother Steve, uh, Minister Steve, Pastor Steve? I don't want to get it wrong, though. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Um, the, 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 the title pastor 
does not appear on my bio on Instagram, but okay. I'm a pastor by God's grace. Ah, I'm, a, I'm a pastor. And so, I'm, you can call me brother, you can call me mister. <laughs> okay, so Pastor yeah. Steve. Stephen. Stephen, yes. Awesome. Stephen. Yes, yes sir. <laughs> Absolutely. I thank you again for this time to get to share. And this has just been a topic on my mind um, for a while. And I really thank you for the opportunity to come and be able to share about it. Um, yeah. I, I am I'm just grateful to be here. And thank you also for what you do. You are constantly giving inspiration on your page, even to the small memes. I was looking at a meme earlier on today and um, it was one of those funny ones. And I said, ah, where yeah. was he like where do you source all this awesome stuff from <laughs> and it'll make you laugh but it'll make you think mm. as well i love the mm. last one you did about the couple when you explore the different aspects of the woman and why some women have that moody a uh, moody a uh, mood change um yeah. and just bringing insights about you know the kinds of phases that a woman may go through that the ordinary person won't understand. So um, yeah. I think in that post, you just want to encourage um, couples to understand one another deeper. So your yeah. um, so your your posts are so inspirational. Thank you for everything that you're doing. Thank you um, so much. Just thank you so much. You are really, really a treasure. I, I thank God thank for you, you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. God bless Grateful you. To thank be you. Here. Absolutely. So today, oh my, oh my. Today we're going to be talking about the ego, okay? Mm. And, 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 and to me, I thought it was important to coin, to really coin that title carefully. So mm. if we're going to talk about the ego, we want to talk about the downsides of having an unhealthy ego, okay? Mm. So first of all, let's go into definitions and let's get a clear idea of the definition of ego. Now, there was okay. a psychologist back in the heyday, I mean, he's probably um, decades old at this point, called Sigmund wow. Freud. Sigmund mm. Freud was a psychologist who came up with the terminology, um, well, he kind of spliced the human personal personality into three. And the three parts he sliced them into were the id, which is the pleasure part. It's the sexually instinctive part of us. And then there's the ego, which we're going to talk about today, which is the, pers uh, the, the reality of the person, which is the personality, the actual personality of the human being. And the, re the real person that gets to grow and know themselves, that's the ego. Mm. Now, the alter ego has to do with the, mora the, uh, the, um, the moral side of us. So the, oh, the side that always wants to do the right thing, you know, the side that always wants to autocorrect, the side that always mm. wants to be in the right morally. So um, Sigmund Freud, the psychologist, went into um, the details of these three different parts. He sliced the personality into three parts. So the, the word ego comes from him, in my opinion, comes from Sigmund Freud um, and his definition of it. So today in talking about the demise of man, his ego, we're going to be exploring the dimension of the unhealthy, which you mentioned mm. earlier is the pride aspect or the arrogant part, the unhealthy mm. part of ourselves, of our ego, which is our true selves, called and some that some people may call pride or um some people may call um the the arrogant part we're going to explore nine mm. points today which um um nine things today that that kind of uh diminish the our true selves or our egos now um the very first point that I came across today, and I'll, I'll, I'll name this the nine aspects of our ego, the nine aspects of mm. our ego. The, the, the very first um, point that I came across today was one that really thrilled my mind. I mean, when I was thinking about it, I said, Lord, you know, you have a way of, um, of really bringing out um some important things in us as human beings helping us to understand our weaknesses so that we can move yeah. forward but the first 
um, point I want to talk about is the ego that equates itself um, to self-knowledge, okay? So instead of, to self-absorption, sorry. So instead of the person who um, owns that ego to, to uh, admit that they, no, they don't know everything or they're not knowledgeable about all things, instead they want to do what? They want to say that, oh, you know, I am all knowing or there's nothing that that I am not knowledgeable knowledgeable about and that leads mm. to self absorption so so the first point being that um an egotistical person or a person who is who um is filled with pride is never willing to accept that they don't know everything is never willing mm. to be teachable is never willing to be broken enough to even apologize, like you mentioned here, or say say thank you, or say like you mentioned so beautifully earlier on, to say thank you or to say please. Instead, they want to kind of um, put across the notion that they know all yeah. things and that that there's nothing that that goes by that they're not on un un they don't understand or they don't know about so they have that a uh, self-absorbed notion they have that self self-absorbed characteristic and as children of god i tell you especially in ministry if we have this type of behavior as teachers as people who share the word as people who are just um representing christ here on earth if we have a self-absorbed um ideation or idea of ourselves we can really literally go nowhere nobody nobody will be willing to be on our team because they say no 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 that one he or she knows too much they know everything so let's let's leave her to herself or let's leave him to himself so that's the number yeah. one part uh number one point the number two point is that the ego is highly competitive and thinks in terms of win or lose I was looking at somebody um, this this past week, and I was noticing some characteristics about the person, and I kind of I, I, I and I kind of noted some of these characteristics in them. I said, "Why is it that you?" Oh, I asked the question to them. I said, "Why is it that you're always thinking in terms of winning or losing? <laughs> Why is it that you can't just be okay with well potentially not being on the winning side?" especially if it's not a competition why can't you just understand that sometimes you may win and sometimes you may lose but they said yeah. no 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 you know only a um only a complacent person will settle for losing and i'm thinking wow okay well if that's their perspective let me just leave it there so but in my mind and in my heart um I, I, I couldn't help but think, you know, it's the Holy Spirit that helps such a person or so that can help us to think past just winning or losing and really, really look into the benefit of the team, especially if we're working with people. We'll look at the benefit or, 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 or the values or the, the positive that another team member may have to offer instead of thinking in terms of winning or losing as a leader. So winning or losing is 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 a characteristic or a trait of an ego and another trait of an egotistical person or a person who is self-absorbed or prideful or is not willing to to um to walk um as a humble individual with a healthy ego. The number 3 aspect I came across was the fact that an egotistical person must correct and does not accept contradiction by any means. So contradiction meaning um, someone who challenges their opinion. An, ego an egotistical person is constantly thinking of how they can always be right at all times, Pastor Steve. Mm. Mm. They're thinking mm. constantly of how they can win an argument at all times, no matter the all cost. Time. And yeah, and, and I just feel as though, you know, in that, in that, in that, in that um, way of thinking or being, we're losing as people. We're losing as leaders and we're losing as the body of Christ when we're constantly yeah. in competition and we're not willing to accept uh, correction. Mm. Now, another characteristic, the number four, and I really want to highlight these because sometimes as people who may tend to veer into 
some of these characteristics, we're not aware of what we're doing. So I feel like if we yeah. highlight some of these points today, maybe some of us can become more self-aware and even change. Mm. Number four point, the ego hates change. Wow. The ego, the, the ego, the egotistical person hates to be um, to to change their way or their mode of operating. Say mm. they're a CEO of a company, for example, and they have all these people under them, uh, or they have a various uh, uh, amount of teams or team members or project managers. However, it works. If we have a CEO as the egotistical person, they're never going to want to accept any kind of suggestion in terms of how to change their mode of operating. They're constantly going to understand that in their right, in their mind, that they're always right. Mark chapter 1 verse 15 tells us about repent. <laughs> Mark chapter 1 verses 15, um, I don't know if we have time, we could take note of it for now, but we can go to it later if we have the, if they have, if we have the time. It talks about repent. The word repent is like a curse word to some people. They don't want yeah. to hear repent. They don't want to hear no turn, turn from your wicked ways or, or make an adjustment because, it, you know, it's like, how dare you challenge my own status quo? How dare yeah. you challenge the way that I do things? Because they feel as though they're always right. <laughs> Another characteristic. That's the number four characteristic. They hate change. Um. I'll go through nine. I don't want to surpass my time. I think I have some time left, but I just want to keep yeah, track. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay, sure, awesome. Sure. Number five characteristic, Pastor Steve, is that yeah. they minimize, yes, sir. They minimize the heart and they minimize the, sorry, the sin of the heart and they focus more on the sin of the flesh, right? So if you notice with uh, certain leaders who may be in ministry, who are constantly talking about, you know, maybe the sin of immorality or the sin of um, any, any sin that has to do with the flesh, sin of immorality. Um, you, you talk about uh, stealing. You talk about different aspects of sin, sin that have to do with the flesh. They're constantly capitalizing on that because there's they have a self-righteous tendency. They have a self-righteous um, disposition. And... To them, sins that have to do with the flesh are the most um, are the most uh, loathed sins. But in God's eyes, that's not the way it is. In God's eyes, every sin is a bad sin. There are no categories to to the kinds of sin that 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 um, that that we commit as as people who are learning how to walk with Christ. But an egotistical person will constantly talk, focus on the sins that have to do primarily with the flesh. Yeah. And that is, that is another pointer. An egotistical person needs to always feel special and always give um, um, people the opportunity to praise them. <laughs> so they get in a gathering and they want to be the one to be praised. They want to be the one to take credit or to take um, adulation for one thing yeah. or another because they always want attention around them, constantly want attention around them, even though there are mm. other people who may deserve that same attention. So an egotistical person cannot help but bask in their glory <laughs> constantly. And this is another pointer. An egotistical person seeks immediate gratification and despises anything that is uncomfortable or difficult. So they're generally always looking for the easy way out. They want to cut corners. They don't want to go through the grind of working for, 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 for their credit. They don't want to go through the grind of, of, of um, applying themselves to a project or really, really doing the work that it takes to be successful. They want to cut yeah. corners because they want instant gratification. That is an egotistical mm -hmm. person. And lastly, an, ego per is, an egotistical person is sensitive and they're highly offended. Don't you dare say a word. <laughs> Don't you dare say um, uh, 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 anything to demean them 
or any slight any slight comment that may be um, giving them some type of critique. Because guess what's going to happen? They're going to become offended. And they, they become criticism. offended. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They become offended because they feel like nobody has the right to correct them, that they're always right, like we mentioned in the first point. So these are a few points that I just wanted to bring out. There are a few scriptures that I wanted to note as well for anyone who wants to go and look up scriptural backing for, uh, for what we're talking about today. Um, there's so many scriptures on pride. There's Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18, which talks about pride goes before destruction and the haughty spirit before stumbling. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before stumbling. In other words, let us not be prideful because in pride, we, we fall. In pride, we stumble because we're so full of ourselves. Matthew chapter 26, verse 22 says, Being deeply grieved, they each one began to say to him, Surely not I, Lord. So these are people who are offended with a statement that Christ himself made. And they begin to challenge Christ, saying, wait, so surely not I, Lord. No, not me, Lord. It's not me you're talking about in this your sermon today. Because yeah. me, ah, I don't do that kind of thing. It's not, that's not my style. Eh? Master, you know, surely not me. It's not me you're talking about. You see? that, And we all tend to have that tendency. <laughs> um, that yeah. self-righteous tendency. So that's Matthew chapter 26, verse 22. And then John chapter 14, verse 27 says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, not as the world gives, but, I'm um, sorry, do not let your heart be troubled, and nor you, nor should you let it be fearful, sorry, this is the old English version, I prefer the message, but that's fine, uh, John chapter 14, verse 27, John chapter 8, verse 58 says, Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say unto you, before Abraham was born, I am. And we know that what that what's that that is driving um, yeah. the understanding there is is that Christ was trying to remind us of who the true God is, or who the true the, the 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 only righteous one is, who is Himself, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Psalm one hundred five verse twenty two says to imprison His princes at will that he may teach his elders wisdom. Hallelujah. So we can go through all those scriptures whenever we get a moment and just go into the context of them to be reassured of what Christ, um, the, the mentality that Christ will have us imbibe as children of God and um, remind ourselves of how important it is to be broken, like you mentioned, um, Pastor Steve, um, yeah. to be broken in heart and allow um, his, 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 his glory or allow his spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit is our friend and he's the one who helps us on a daily basis to understand when we're being, being prideful or when we're mm. being arrogant or when we're in a phase where we don't want to be, be uh, teachable. He's the one that kind of auto-corrects us and changes us so that we can resemble Christ in our behavior. So um, these are the few points that I wanted to talk about. And I don't know if there are any questions or if, if any, if you even want to add on to what, yeah, I'm sure there's so much that, um, yeah, that, okay. that you have to contribute as well. We can, we can go ahead and banter back and forth if you'd like. Yeah, so we can I, talk more. yeah I, I, I have some questions um, from my desk here, um, from my okay. experiences with uh, counseling people. I just want to ask. But ladies and gentlemen, God bless you all. You are on to... Um, Mrs. Amize Obodozie, and she's been talking about um, the demise of man, his ego. Now would be a good time for you to ask questions, so send me your questions already, and please, if you are following me and not following her, you are very wrong, please do well to follow her already. The Lord will help us. Now, um, you've, you've spoken a lot about this egotistical person, and so is there a difference between an egotistical person and a choleric and a narcissist? Can you explain that? Sure, absolutely. And I love how you've used all three because they're so similar, but they're so different. Okay. They're so similar, but they're so different. So an egotistical person is a person who 
um, is more in tune with the the prideful part of their ego. Now, the ego in general is the healthy phenomenon. There's nothing wrong with um, having a, a, a healthy ego. But where we go wrong is where um, the prideful part of us overtakes overtakes our, our personality or the, the self-assured, the arrogant part of us overtakes our personality. So the ego is the ego or the prideful self is um is a part of us that is kind is is not in tune with christ is not in tune with um our, our christ-like nature now a choleric um is a person who is very confident right very confident wow. very always willing to step to the front and get things done and so on so a choleric is not on a choleric personality is not unhealthy necessarily except they're they're imbibing some of these characteristics that we've mentioned except they're they're becoming uh they're not willing to listen to other people's opinion or they they yeah. get into an, an argument or a um you know a, 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 a an unhealthy banter with somebody and are not willing to accept their responsibility i think being a choleric um is is not necessarily necessarily a negative thing it's a personality trait and if we are healthy and if we are exercising healthy habits as a choleric i know for sure that we are we are on the winning side now a prideful mm. person is a person who never ever wants to accept any kind of responsibility they never want to accept any kind of ownership for their negative behavior they never want to accept that they may be wrong at some point or another. And that's the difference between a choleric person, an egotistical person, and a prideful person. A prideful person is always right, no matter what. So those, in, yeah. um, in my humble opinion, are the differences. Mm, okay. Yeah, I, I, I just wanted you to um, scratch the pot briefly on the narcissism aspect. Narcissism. Because we know that... Yes, the narcissism. Because you agree with me that if a narcissist does not have the fear of God, there's going to be a problem. And yes, in my survey, in my counseling sessions, 95% of narcissists are not, are not God-fearing. I don't know That's why it's right. like that, but a situation whereby you are married to a woman, you don't want her to work, you want her to be a stay-at-home mom. You <laughs> still will not celebrate the little win she has. If her mother or her brother gives her money, remember you are not allowing her to work. If somebody mm -hmm. gives her money, you are not happy that someone has given her money. You would right. probably want to still collect that money. That same money, wow. wow. You don't want her to get a job. This, 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 uh, you know, that is why I, I because a narcissist, a narcissist can make life uncomfortable for, for a woman. That's right. So, That's right. That's right. Uh, yes. I, I, and I've seen narcissists who are not even cholerics. Right. Exactly. They just, they, just, they, do, they just want they themselves to be the center of attraction, which means that a narcissist can be egotistical. Yes. Exactly. So... Yes, that was what I I, I I was I was open to you know I wanted you to deal more on that narcissism sure. because absolutely it's a very it's, it's a killer. It is, it is. So now narcissism, I think you know what you know. There's a comedian I've forgotten his name now, but he always talks about the the overall ogakpatakpata of things. You know, okay. So uh, in my I think opinion, that's um, uh, MC Edo Pekin. Oh the my god, the of them all. The he likes to compare and contrast. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> the Pata of pride or, or an egotistical nature is a narcissist. A narcissist is a person who is so self-consumed that they almost expect for people to worship, I don't know, not worship, but to absolutely honor their opinion and their actions at all times. And they don't care about the repercussions of their behavior. So I love the example that you just gave of 
the, a, a man who you know a, a potential someone people who you are counseling whose wife he could not uh, give money to or who he uh, someone who his wife who he wanted to demean and and um kind of bring low because of his narcissistic nature now when a person is narcissistic compared to a, a prideful person you know see a, a prideful person can uh be prideful in some regard but but, but maybe bendable they may be willing to you know, maybe at some point consider even consider other people's opinion but a narcissist yeah. will never buckle to anybody else's opinion because they feel as yeah. though they know it all you cannot tell them anything new because they know it all they they, they you know they, they probably um will give you scenarios of when they've gone through this or that and how well they are you know how capable they are of dealing uh, with certain situations but a narcissist is definitely i have a google definition here let me just quickly give this very quickly just so we can get yeah. some context and it's it says it's a person who has excessive interest in or um a sex excessive interest in uh themselves or excessive yes. admiration for themselves so they think True. that the world revolves around them Love they think them. that the world revolves around us, so they don't have they don't have any um, considerations for anybody but themselves. Mm. So everything centers on them. Their opinion is most important. Everything uh, um, centers around them and is circled around them for anybody yeah. to even move forward. So that's the yeah. difference between a narcissist and a person who is prideful or a person who is yeah. just choleric. Or even a person who is egotistical. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, and um, mm -hmm. when you look at the words, they say narcissistic personality disorder. Right. I, I have a problem with that grammar. Okay. Uh, because when you say personality disorder, mm. that, that means there's something not in place. Yes, yes, uh, Pastor Steve. You know, some people consider uh, actually narcissism is a mental um, health. Um, it's, it's it's considered as a mental uh, like a disease. When a person is overly narcissistic, it can be diagnosed in the DSM for uh, here. There's a, something called it's like the the Bible for diagnosing uh, different kinds of mental issues. In the DSM for narcissistic personality disorder is classified as an actual mental disease. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of disease. So when a person, it's when a person has developed, maybe because of childhood experiences in the past, they've developed a sense of so much pride or so much uh, self-adulation that nothing else matters but them. And it no. often starts from when they're they're young, uh, they're yeah. in their childhood. Yeah, it's an actual yeah. disease. Now, um, you know, when we are talking about things like this, I like to share a very practical story so that yes. people will really understand what we are talking about. It's sad. Now, imagine this scenario. You succeeded in deceiving your wife that she she was only work when you guys got married. All of a sudden two months into marriage, reality has dawned on her that you won't allow her to work. While okay. she's coming to terms with that dimension, she takes in, gets very pregnant, very heavy now. You did not get a nanny for her. You still want her to fix your meals. <laughs> you still want sex yeah. and you don't give her regular money when she reaches out to people like siblings who give her money you are not happy right so ma marry marrying this person with what you have said now it simply means that surely there's 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 an issue of a mental instability. Oh, absolutely! I would I would say so for sure. Yes. Now th and this is where I'm going to. Okay, this is where I'm going to. 
these guys we never agree that they have a problem oh no because they are, because they are very manipulative they will always look for a way to find the balance and justify whatever they are doing okay. now this is where i'm going to is a question yes sir when somebody does not understand that he has a problem and you cannot force him to go to a therapist how can balance be found in that marriage or even coming to terms with the kind of person he is okay so when the person is not admitting that they have a problem yes and they're in a union they're they're in a marriage yes and the woman is what's what's the woman's position or what is she willing to do at at this point she's just accepting her fate pretty much right yes 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 now, because she probably does not have financial capacity to move out of the marriage you know how it is in this part of the world 75 percentage of the women that are married are not happy yeah but because their husbands have the financial capacity they don't even have access to this money they are just staying put because of their kids exactly, exactly. but they're not happy how do you marry that kind of situation oh my i i, I think that is honestly that in my opinion that's probably a recipe for separation some type of separation at least at the preliminary phase now if there's already someone in the picture who is counseling them is there someone in the picture who may be counseling them or yes. who may be advising them okay if there's already yes. someone in the picture i think maybe they should focus more on finding um helping her to source um a meaningful way to a meaningful way to make money to examine her skills and see how she can start to make money now that is my problem there was a time i did a live session with them um, somebody on instagram very popular and um, wives and mothers i don't know if you know her i was okay. invited to speak on um the reason why we have um the lack of hungry men in the dispensation right i'm saying this as a man and for men that are online this is true we have a decline we have a decline of men that are not hungry 98 percentage of my counselees are female and they are over mm. 400 close to 500 i can say that it is only about three percent that are men wow. which means that when an average nigerian man nigerian husband is told that only don't you think we should see a therapist a counselor they right. will never agree to it oh no i don't know what is obtainable over there in the us but in this part of the world men see counseling sessions as are you trying to say mm. i'm the problem in this marriage yes sir. what does he know mm. why should i go and see a counselor do you know what he does to his wife in his marriage at home right. they will never so mm -hmm. i have seen a man reaching out to me warning me to stay away from his wife as if i was doing anything with the wife that if i don't stay away he's going to you know block my page he's going to deal with me and stuff like that these are some of the issues we are having so in a situation whereby a woman does not have the profile to leave a marriage and the man is not willing to make his marriage work and there's no financial capacity right what can be done Wow. it's a problem i know i'm asking this because sometimes these are the things we confront daily absolutely this is real this is a real situation i feel i know for sure that that woman needs to be empowered somehow in my opinion i would focus more on the empowerment of that woman because when she becomes empowered now when she becomes empowered she has more of a chance of surviving outside the marriage but if she's not, if she doesn't have anyone who can lead her the right way or anyone who can point her to resources that can help her help herself and maybe her child or children, then she's stuck. She's stuck and it, she's, she has no way of coming out of 
to, to be an independent person who can fend for herself outside of that marriage. Now, if she chooses to still be in the marriage, I think that the onus is on the advisor or the counselor to carefully counsel her or find ways to get her, um, to connect her with resources or to connect her with someone who can help her develop her skill set so she can begin to help herself as soon as possible. Because um, with a narcissistic person, the way you're explaining the husband or the, the, the spouse, with that level of narcissism and, and callous, that callous nature for his own wife, there's no telling uh, how, what may happen if she's not able to fend for herself or find ways to fend for herself as, as soon as possible. So to me, yeah. if I were counseling a couple like that, I would really capitalize on really reaching out for resources for that lady to, to begin to help herself so she can move forward. Yeah. I yeah. think to me that's, that, that would well. be the first point of call. Yes, you have spoken very, very well. Um, the truth is this. Even as a pastor, I am not scared of telling people to take a break. Mm. There's a difference between separation and divorce. Yes, so. There are some battles you cannot fight while you are in. You need a comfort zone mm. to fight certain battles. Because yes, whilst sir. you are praying for a man that is making life difficult for you in that same confines of marriage, you cannot even pray properly. Exactly. So it is always nice for you to take a break, understand what can be done from afar, and exactly. see if you still have what it takes to go back into that you know, marriage. This is true. Because you see, some pastors, I like what a princess is saying. Some pastors say, stay. Stay, keep praying for him. Stay. This was right. what made that gospel musician to die. Mm -hmm. Because she kept enduring and enduring and enduring until I've, I've, have, I've seen cases where people reach out to me and say, Sir, I just feel like dying. I feel like committing mm -hmm. suicide. Before you commit suicide, let it not be as if God will not hold me responsible that I did not profile a solution. I'll tell you, my dear, do you have parents? Can you go back to your house? Please take a break. Let it be that this man will come to his senses and say, oh, I think I've been bad to this woman. I think we need to, I need to, uh, you know, go and apologize to another. Like but now this is the, this is the cross of the matter. Sometimes exactly. some of these men, we pretend as if they've changed. When this yeah. woman come back, after about two to three months, they revert back to their. Yes. So true. Someone is saying, I'm so scared of marriage. You don't need to be scared of marriage. <laughs> you don't need to be afraid. <laughs> this, is, this, this is what I was I saying in the you. last session. Mm -hmm. Marriage is beautiful, but it is not an achievement. It's not an achievement at all. Because it's... whatever you cannot go to heaven with is not an achievement. And there's definitely no marriage in heaven. Exactly. exactly. This is the truth. So if you want to do marriage God's own way, you must understand that marriage is a product that you cannot consume without the permission of the manufacturer, who is God. Yes. This is true. Oh, I love that so, statement she, she made just now, um, Pastor Steve. It says, she says, oh, wait, let not escape from me. I think I'll pin it. It says, most black men were not well trained by their mom, and, and their mom spent time training the, the, the girl child. This is something that I so want to get into talking about now. Raising boys, especially in the diaspora. I'm about to mm. tackle that now because, you know, it's so true. I even look at my son here. I'm like, oh, God, give us the capacity to raise this boy so that he can, you know, he, he's, he's, um, he can be of quality and of value for his own wife when, you know, when the time comes. Or even if he decides not to marry soon, no problem. But at least to his world at large, he can be a sensible, quality young man. You know, exactly. Yeah, we spend so much time focusing on oh the woman or oh, your decency or oh, your manners, your you know, and we forget our boys, and that's what yields to these men that are so narcissistic and so full of themselves that they have to treat a woman like you've just described, Pastor Steve. You see, the the, the thing is this: 
I, I, yeah. there, there, there's, there's a part I want to, you know, come down to in this um, um, statement. Most black yeah. men were not well trained. The moms no. spend time training to get child. Now, this is it. Mm. It is not the responsibility of a woman alone to train yes. the child. It is the, yes, it's a dual effort. It yes. is supposed to be a dual effort. Now, Absolutely. most Gen, Gen Zs will not understand what I'm about to say now. <laughs> Just some few millennials. Why am I saying this? My mom, my late mom of blessed memory, stopped flogging me at the age of 19. One okay. and 19. I mean, I was already in the university then. Mm, mm. Now, I was her only child. Mm -hmm. But as at 14, 15, she had started teaching me how to cook. Exactly. Even before then. Whenever... Yes, whenever I messed up, she would go to the wardrobe, bring all her dirty clothing and give me to wash. Mm -hmm. For many years, I was washing her pants and bras as a form of punishment. <laughs> you know, so some of these, <laughs> some of these, some of these um, values are missing now because the average woman is not too happy about the state of her mind in the marriage. So she is overly concerned about what role to play when her husband is not even available. Mm. So the husband is like, don't I give you money? Don't I provide yeah. the money? Don't disturb me. How much do you need? Is it about the children's school fees? Mm. They don't want to be involved. Mm -hmm. So you can see a dimension of mothers training kids under pressure. Yeah, you can imagine, imagine when you are training a child under pressure. Oh my, it's always going to be a problem. Oh, totally, totally. So it, totally. It, it, it's a challenge, it's a challenge. It is, you know, you know I, I, I really, oh my, I need to really form alliances with some, some, um, some people so that we can get a quality conversation and not just a conversation for our, you know, for our banter, but a conversation. Yeah to change the hearts, to turn the hearts of men, you know, a conversation to enlighten fathers out there that the job is not just for mom. The job is not just for your wife. Here, there, there, you know, people who have on this side of, you know, in the diaspora, you know, the people who don't even think about things like nannies or, um, you know, domestic help because Pastor Steve, it's very, very expensive. But you all have the luxury of domestic help over there, you know. Uh, you know, and I just find that intriguing. Although we have family members, their grandparents and so on, it's 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 a big help, I must say, with their big their their their, their uncles and aunties and their um grandparents who are able to chip in every now and then. But having that permanent help in the house is priceless <laughs> but some of us don't have yeah. the luxury of that we pretty much are the house girl we are the washerman <laughs> we are the everything you know so we have to really really um it takes really um you're sitting down to plan properly so that you could really run an effective household or else you'll be so stressed that you could wind up in the mental hospital if you know that's, um, that's true it's a lot. It's a lot. We need to focus on raising boys that boys that can face um, face this world, really, really face mm. face what it takes um, out there, um, in terms yeah. of discipline and in terms of dealing with the other sex, the other gender, the female gender. Yeah, it's so important. Yeah, yeah. So um, there's another question here for you. So okay. the thing is this: if God, um, if God intentionally created man with flaws and weaknesses. When I mean man, man and woman now. If God intentionally yeah. created man with um, flaws and weaknesses for man to work on himself or herself, why is there a cryptic nature to mm. be stereotyped and hate change with a passion? A cryptic nature in man, in the male gender? Oh, let me come again with the question. If God intentionally created man with flaws and weaknesses mm. for man to work on himself or herself, yes. why is there a cryptic nature 
What I mean, crypt is hidden. Why is there a, crypt, a hidden nature to be stereotyped and hate mm -hmm. change with a passion? Oh, my. <laughs> you know, if you ask me that question, there's only one answer I have for you. And that is the fact that our, 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 the self, our selfish nature or the, the part of us that wants to self-aggrandizement, the part of us that wants to be fulfilled and not have to, to, to work for, for what it is that we are, we are desiring or dreaming of. Some people may call it the temptations, the wiles of the enemy or the temptations that we may face out there. I think that the resistance comes from the temptations that we see out there, the things that we desire, the things that we feel are more comfortable than our, our current state. I, I feel like the resistance to, to, to anything that is uh, beneficial definitely comes from, from outside, primarily because most of what we feel, feed ourselves is from the outside sources like social media outside sources like co-workers, outside sources like just friends, sometimes even family, outside sources like the world news. <laughs> so a lot of those, when we are inundated with all that data and all that information consistently and constantly, the only way to go, if we're not careful and if we're not guided by the Holy Spirit, the only, the only thing that begins to develop, the only characteristic that begins to develop is resistance to the right way to do things. So another cause I would, I would, I would say is um, lack of communion with the Holy Spirit or lack of communion with, with, with God himself or lack of understanding of even our purpose. If we understand the purpose of be, our purpose for being or the reason why we are called as children of God to whatever realm, what happens is, if we understand that, what happens is we are automatically set to please him in every way. So we are not built with a resistance to correction. We're not built with a resistance to those things that will benefit us. But we're willing to say, you know, Lord, I, I break myself down to your will. I break myself down to, to anything that will try to, to lead me out of your will. So in my opinion, that's the answer. Two things I mentioned, lack of communion with the Holy Spirit, lack of uh, when we're not in tune with God's will for our lives, and also outside sources, especially social media. It can cause us to be so resistant. Amazing, amazing, amazing there. Amazing. I just quickly add to what you have said. I think um, yes, we have to understand that in as much as the fact that God is the one that created us, yes. he respects our power of choice. Absolutely. You know, I was telling Absolutely. someone something. I said, um, when God created Eve and brought Eve to Adam, mm -hmm. Adam was attracted to what he saw. Mm -hmm. Meaning, by the time Adam saw Eve, if the breasts were looking small and he didn't like the hip because he was obviously naked, he, he had the power to say, come on, I don't think I like what I'm seeing. I mean, this is somebody that chose the names of all the animals, the plants mm -hmm. and everything. He had too much power. He would yes. have. But obviously, God gave him what he knew would have wanted. So I think to add to what you have said, if you don't desire a change, mm -hmm. God will never help you get it. Mm -hmm. God is at liberty to only give you what you are hungry enough for. Yeah. So there is a science behind hunger and intentionality. If you look at the story of the woman with the issue of blood, she, she said, she conceived in her heart that if only I can touch the hem of Jesus' garment, I mm -hmm. know I'll be made whole. 
-hmm. And those days, you know that Jesus Christ was like a local champion, always a local celebrity. He doesn't walk around alone. You could imagine about 300 men flocking around him. Exactly. And she was able to touch. And when she did, she received her healing. The same thing with the blind, the story of blind Bartimaeus. He yeah. kept crying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy yeah. on me. Even I mean, when they said, I mean, keep quiet. You think Jesus Christ is looking at someone like you. Bible says he mm -hmm. cried louder. Yes. I Jesus love that. Christ had gone. He cried yeah. louder. Jesus Christ yeah. had gone forward. He stopped and turned. Mm -hmm. He didn't ask for them to bring him. Mm -hmm. Rather, he came to him. Yes. So the ambit of hunger and intentionality cannot be, the importance cannot be overemphasized. So yes. I, I think with what you have said, if an average man is not hungry enough for a change, mm -hmm. no matter who is praying for him, that change will never come. So I, I think that's just uh, what I can add to it. Except in rare cases whereby the person cannot have, you know, a first divine encounter. Like, I just must break you. I must use it the way I think. I think that's just it. Yes. Yeah. So um, the last question oh, I have here, it. please. <laughs> Thank God you bless so you. much. Ladies that, and gentlemen, that, God bless you. Mm -hmm. That is like the ice. <laughs> you know when you put cherry on the cake? That's the bear. <laughs> yeah. It's finished. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Sir. All right, so the last question here, ladies and gentlemen, please, now is a good time to send in your questions already. I think we have one or two persons who are sending questions. I don't... Yeah. I, I, I don't. Okay, just let me look at them while I get this. All right, so sure. some of the traits you mentioned about an um, egotistical um, person, you will notice that they are male inclined. They are yeah. usually male inclined. So mm -hmm. it's rare to see women in this dispensation operating in this dimension why do you think it's this way oh my that is interesting your perspective is interesting pastor steve because honestly it's so it baffles me the amount of women i see with these traits especially these days you know and i don't think this is on this side just this side of the world alone i know back home we have some women who are trailblazers and these are women of timba and kaleba <laughs> You know, who yeah. are running things. You know, we even have people who are, um, you know, who are running things and doing things, major stuff. And these are the kind of women who you sometimes find with these kind of qualities where they're so in charge. They've been in charge for a good part of their lives. So they're not really, you know, anything, things that, uh, um, contributions that you make are irrelevant. Because to them, they feel like they know everything. So honestly, I see that in a lot of women here, but it's also um, shows up in many men. Now, I'm not sure why there's a disparity there. The one thing I can say is that God made man as this, God made woman as the weaker vessel. You know, man naturally is made to dominate and to have presence. A man is naturally made that way. So if a man is egotistical, it not that or or uh, or has like a narcissistic tendency. I don't know. Should I say that it comes? It's something that is almost expected sometimes. I don't know. I feel as though it may be a trait that that is nurtured, uh, maybe from a young age. So if you look, like, we're talking about boys now. So if you have a young boy who has never been told what to do, who has never been given responsibilities, who was left to um, move forward with life on his own accord, you know, based on his own rules. That's the kind of young man that develops into a narcissistic person. Now, I don't know why it's a dominant trait mostly in men. I think it's because men are made to, to be dominant people in the first place. They're made to be leaders. They come naturally with that masculine testosterone energy. They come naturally with those, uh, in psychology, they call it the, anim the anima you know, there's, I'm sorry, the animus. The animus is the male side of any human being. 
And then the anima is the female side of any human being. So all human beings, be they male or female, have an anima, anima and an animus. A-N-I-M-A. -A. An anima, the anima is the female side of any given human being. You sitting in front of me, sir, have an anima, which is the female side of you, or the, the, the mm. feminine aspect of you. And then you also have the animus. Now, in men, their animus tends to be more dominant just because they're men. In women, the anima may be the more dominant side, the, 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 the female aspect or the female side. So answering to answer your question simply, I really feel as though um, it all starts from when the baby Ch the, 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 the child is being formed and the child is being raised. It all starts from there. Nature I, and I nurture. Nature and nurture, exactly. I was just going to say that. It all starts from there. So I, I, I don't know. I, I can't answer that categorically to say the reason why men tend to be more narcissistic is because for you know whatever reason I want to mention. I think that Oh, it, it all depends on the up, upbringing of the child and what kind of parents they had in their life to 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 raise them. Um, mm. I think it'd be wrong of me to give my opinion. That's such a that's such a big question to give my opinion about that. Yeah, yeah. You, but but you, you've done well. You've spoken amazingly well. You, you can imagine a young boy growing up as a last child. Yes. In the midst of seven sisters. Or let's say mm. five girls now. You would agree with me that he will naturally become a very shelletic person. He would yes. even want to almost want to, you know, want to dress like them, want to talk like them. You mm. know, it's probably is is even his sister or his mother would say, My friend, don't you know you're a boy? Don't you know you're a boy? Right. You know, when yeah. you've you've grown up seeing messed up parts everywhere, pants and bras and all those things, you the way they talk and so it is going to take you a while. So that kind of a person can grow up and not be naturally forceful. Right. Okay. So um, he will just be, he will just be laid back. And sometimes God is always faithful. The kind of person he will marry may not be a woman, a lady that grew up amongst five or six brothers. Mm -hmm. Where she, exactly. our orientation has made her feel like, I, I think I can behave like a man, you know, right. the way she, the way she saw her brothers talking and all of that, it wears mm -hmm. on her naturally. That's you true. know, she becomes what we call a tomboy. Right. You know, and all of that. Yes. Uh, yeah. That is just a side, a side information. But based on that question, you've spoken well. Uh, I, I just feel, um, Thank you. You, were, you, were, you were saying something about when a man shows signs of being, you know, dominant. It's almost not supposed to be a surprise. Ah, uh, yeah. It's not supposed to be exactly. a surprise. Exactly. It's in, not supposed in, in to be a surprise. Cases. In most cases. What becomes, uh, uh, what makes it to be surprising is when it's overdone. Yes. Then we can now attach the disorder dimension to exactly. it. Exactly. Mm. That is so true. Exactly. When it's overdone, like you were talking about the narcissistic person, you're giving yes. an example just now with those kind yes. of traits and that um, he's almost like suppressing the lady, suppressing his wife mm -hmm. and not allowing her to um, express her uh, talent and express her, her, even her reason for being, you know, when you're mm -hmm. under that kind of suppressed atmosphere, uh, no, yeah. there's something wrong with, with that kind of, um, Exactly. Um, male exactly. Yeah. I, I, and I think one thing I've realized is this. Making your marriage work with your husband or your wife is not even for you. It's not for right. me. It's not for you. It's not for us. It is for our children. Because yes, imagine yeah. a scenario whereby you come back home every day, you give your wife a hug, you give her a kiss, your son is seeing it. Yes. He is learning. The oh, wow. Yes. That means when I grow up, I should always hug my wife and kiss her. Your daughter is seeing it and she sees it as everything. normal. Mm. That my daddy should always come back and hug my mom and give her a kiss. 
So by default, I should accept mm. I, I should accept and expect this dimension when I'm married. Yes. So expectations yes. are cut short, and then she breaks down when the man that she eventually marries comes in and the first thing is asking, Where's my food? Yeah. And after that, <laughs> is my water ready? I want to take a shower. And mm. she's like, Why? Like, were you not raised up that way? Mm -hmm. so the marriage is not even for us but for the children that are watching and the ones unborn that's right and that's what the bible says in psalm 11 verse 3 say if the foundation is destroyed you see that statement is deep it's not just when yeah. you are building a house now. what can the righteous the do that's the yeah. that's the sad question that the bible did not answer you see mm. apparently what the righteous can do is to pray obviously prayers are not enough yeah exactly. it's a challenge it's a problem it is it is a, a challenge. challenge you know there's so much that we have to uh, you know there's something that the yoruba say that i love it's a terminology that but yoruba use they say bara wa we when we have to sit mm. down to, with ourselves and yes. talk to ourselves yeah you know yes. i feel like sometimes we have to sit down uh, pastor steve and like talk to ourselves you know mm. about what you know what standards we are really going by are we going by yeah. social media standards of marriage or even singlehood or wherever we may be what standards are we really playing to you know what you know yeah. what standards to me that's the bottom line if we're able to sit down and speak to ourselves let the holy spirit speak to us let we and the holy spirit have conversations let's talk to ourselves and remind ourselves of who we are who we are and the standards that God has 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 um requires of us, I think that mm. a lot of things will be corrected, honestly. Because it starts, yeah. you know, somebody said, um, I think it was Michael Jackson that wrote a song called Man in the Mirror. It starts with mm. me looking in introspectively to who I'm becoming versus who God wants me to be. You know, yeah. I feel like if we can do that. Ah, no, no, no. A lot of problems will be solved. Mm, you will not mm. feel the need to have to superimpose yourself on another person. Yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe because that's all you know how to do or that's how the way you are brought up. Because the Holy Spirit will help you understand who you are. That you don't Apparently. have to do that. That you're enough. Absolutely. You don't have to impose mm. yourself on another person. Yeah. But there's so much, I mean, we can go ahead. We can talk about this thing till, till tomorrow, Amazing. but yeah thank you so much this is great information right. uh, yeah so awesome. someone is asking more underscore more underscore two three one god bless you my brother I celebrate you he said is it wrong to make decisions okay this is a woman sorry i said my brother okay. is it wrong to make decisions or correct my mind about what he is doing that is wrong to make decisions or correct ah, this thing. I keep tapping. It's changing my eyes. I don't want to change my eye. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay. okay. Is, it, is it wrong to, ch to do what? Sorry? Is it wrong to make decisions or correct my man about what he is doing that is wrong? Oh, absolutely like, not. Mm. What do you... Please. Uh, yeah. Absolute. I don't think... I think it's the, the way that... for you. Oh. Okay. I think it's the way that you approach your man. Now, first of all, can you take time to study your man? Study him from the crown of his head, from the grain of his head to the tippy toe, the nails on his. Can you study your man? Study him very well. Study him on the inside. Know his temperament. Know his likes. Know his dislikes. Know when, you know, the kind of things that put him off as in change his mood. Know when you can go to him. The kind of thing. For my, my husband loves to eat and I love to cook for him. So I know wow. that after he has eaten, I can pay. I can, you know, when they, they said how many, what was that uh, phrase? I can't remember right now. But if I, if I were to, anything I would ask after then is pretty much granted so i have to time him so i think that in timing your husband and understanding him you'll be able to to know when to correct him and how to do it see not every man appreciates um a condescending tone 
not every man appreciates that. Some some men are very right. open. She, 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 she's saying something here now. He's always saying, I don't have the right to tell him what to do. Okay. May I ask you a question, Mo2311? What is your approach to him? How do you come to your husband? This is your husband. How do you no, approach man, him? man, man. They are, they are dating. She's not married. Oh, you're not married. Okay. So even then, well, I'm sure you'll be married eventually, you know, by the grace of God. But even this is like practice time if you're not married, right? Even then, how do you approach him in terms of ideas? How do you approach him in terms of your opinion about what he may be doing or not doing? I feel, honestly, that the best way to approach any man, even a young boy, boys are men, oh, they're little men. You must approach them with regard. You must approach, approach them with regard, maximum regard. So not, it's not just because they are little boys or, or, you know, I don't know how you see your partner, but I'm sure you have regard for him. Approach him with regard and your timing is important as well. So if you are, um, if he's in a bad mood and you want to talk to him about something that's bothering you, it may not be the best time. So just look for the best time to speak with him um based on how you know him and then approach him then they will always be receptive or do something i don't i don't know your relationship with your husband with your man but do something uh that will that will that will help him to understand you better in terms of your approach that 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 won't throw him off so so do it at the right time do it at the right time and help him to respond to you better by by your timing and then by getting to know him his likes and dislikes there's no man who you approach softly that will ever 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 uh reject your opinion that's my opinion wow <laughs> amazing amazing you know the, the bible says um say a soft answer turneth away right anger mm -hmm. but now here is what i'm going to say just to add to your amazing contribution yes sir mm -hmm. you talked about man of approach you talked about timing yeah i was expecting her to say this i've done that too severally now okay our guest speaker has talked about man of approach timing what about lenability yes on his yes. own part Mm. If he is not, if if there is no learnability, if there is no teachability, if he is not teachable, I would advise yeah. you not to go ahead with the marriage. Don't marry mm -hmm. him. I'm yeah. sorry uh, because God has helped us. We have broken more relationships that are supposed to have ended up in marriage. That's mm -hmm. just the truth. I cannot count mm -hmm. the number of relationships because the thing is this: marriage does not change people. Marriage yeah. is an amplifier. It will only amplify what you didn't see, what yeah. you, you were scared to admit, what you mm -hmm. didn't want to observe. There's nothing exactly. like, I, we got married and he has changed. It didn't change. You just no, didn't, didn't see change. it. You, you didn't want to admit. Yes. yes. So if you're telling <laughs> us that uh, he's, he's not learning, or he, he doesn't see you as someone he can talk to, or he can accept advices from. He will never see you as someone he can accept when you marry him. That's true. That's it. A broken relationship is better than a broken marriage. They don't manage marriage. Marriage is supposed no, no. to be enjoyed and not endured. Uh, maximally. Not so endured. Is that say, what it is? Yes, endured. Marriage is supposed to be enjoyed exactly. and not endured. Not exactly. Exactly. Exactly, sir. And it is not all character flaws and weaknesses that you can manage. That's right. A counselor of mine told me something shocking, and I will share. She mm -hmm. said, my man does not cheat on me. He does not beat me. He does not shout on me. Mm. So, but he lies a lot. I think I will marry him. It's not a problem. Although, nobody is perfect, but there are certain things you cannot manage. Somebody that mm. does not beat you, he does not do all stuff like that, and then he lies. Do you know what is going to hide from you many years later when you marry? Exactly. So, exactly. my dear, if you know that, because, I mean, you're going to do life with this guy for 40, 50 years, depending mm -hmm. on how old are you now. So, mm -hmm. imagine when you are married to somebody that does not listen. Exactly. What he has decided is what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. So, 
I think you've heard from our guest speaker and from myself. Oh. He's not composing you, marry him. Besides, is it God's will for you? Have you prayed? And yeah, God is saying you go ahead. One. Because God is not a lot of confusion. God will not allow you to marry somebody that you cannot talk to and he will, he will not listen. Exactly. The all mark exactly. of leadership is not for you not to listen to your wife. Abraham exactly. listens to Sarah. Yes. Yes, sir. Abraham listens to Sarah. Isaac listens to Rebecca. Yes. So, if yes. it's not possible, take a break and take a walk and we'll tell you congratulations. Celebrate you. God yes. You. Great man Takit in the building. Is that Mr. Great man Takit? We hail you, all, sir. Thank you for, for, for joining our live today. God bless you, sir. God bless Great you, man, sir. Thank Celebrate you. you, sir. God bless you. All right. Yeah. So, um, that is awesome. Mm, yeah, I, I don't know if there are other questions. I think we've addressed um, all the questions here. Yeah? I think okay, so. It's, it's good for a man She's to explaining. listen to his wife. Okay. Mm -hmm. For example, he came over to my side and was going into the neighbor's room. He did it the first day. I told him, come the same thing the second. Well, I don't know for how long you people have dated yourselves, and I don't know what the plan is. But <laughs> you've heard it from a guest speaker and from myself. <laughs> if you cannot manage, take a walk. A broken relationship is better than a broken, better than a broken marriage. Yeah. Yeah. It's wow, true. it's been an amazing yeah. one. I don't know wow. if there are other questions, but um, this this has been expository. This has been illuminating. So much mm -hmm. to learn. Faith Bethel, you're just coming now. Why? Where have you been? She was in the first <laughs> session, and I told oh, her okay. that I was supposed to be by 9 p.m. You know, uh, an amazing. Uh, God bless you, my dear. Yeah, you might have to watch the replay of this video session to be able to. You've missed a whole lot, and I know you would have had one or two questions to ask. She's always very vibrant and always. You know, oh. up and doing very intentional questions and all of that. Maybe we yeah. can give her one or two minutes to see if she has any questions for us. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I don't know. Does she even have an idea of where? Because she just tried to set okay. me in and then stuff like that. Okay. Maybe you can just do the honors, do about two or three minutes, um, you know, package of, of okay. She says she'll watch it later. Okay, awesome. Okay, so even that's better. great. Even Wow, thank you so much, Mama. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've been on with Mrs. Amizi Obodozie. She's a family life practitioner. She's a marriage counselor. She's a relationship therapist, popularly called the prophetess. <laughs> she's a worshiper. She's started worshiping God at the age of seven. Of course, please, she has a YouTube channel. Please do well to follow on YouTube, Marriage Family World TV. Subscribe to that channel. Our page on Instagram has been an immense blessing to many people. She's a mother. She's a wife. She's a business owner. She's the co-founder of the True Flow Up, right? Artistic company. It's a management agency for uh, gospel musicians that are based in the U.S., of course, she's a family life proponent and uh, we celebrate God in her life. God has been faithful. She also works on, as an IT, right? IT personnel. Yes. And then um, she has lots of volunteers um, where she goes into orphanage um, dimensions and um, also taking care of widows as well. What an amazing woman of God. Really celebrate you. Amazing profile. Yeah, God bless mm -hmm. you. I just started following her. Please do well to follow her right now. If you are following me, do well to follow her right now. Everybody go over and follow her already. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. It's always amazing mm -hmm. to have you here. And of course, this session is going to be posted on our pages and I'm going to be adding her up as um, um, a facilitator. So all you need to do is just to accept the invite, ma'am, so that it can okay. be shared on your page so that people can um, come in later to you know, have access to you know, the content already. And I know the Lord will help us. Thank you so much, Mama. I celebrate you. Okay. Let us stretch for our hands to God's vessels and begin to pray for her that the Lord Almighty will be with her in her ministry, in her marriage, whatever she lays hands upon shall prosper. She will mm -hmm. not break down, she will break forth. The Lord Almighty will take her from where she is now to where she's supposed to be in the name okay. of Jesus. The mm -hmm. Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18, it says the steps of a righteous are like a shining light. That shall not brighter and brighter as unto the perfect day. So shall it be for you in the name of Jesus. We celebrate you. We love you. We adore you. 
Thank you so much, ma'am. I appreciate you. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, sir. Pastor Thank Steve, you. you're eternally a blessing. You're such a blessing. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share. So great. Thank you. Thank you. I'm looking at a dimension whereby it's going to be a quadruple. Me, you, and two other persons, you know, in a live session. It's going to be okay, amazing. Absolutely. So, Communicate yeah. with me via DM and we yes. can definitely work it out. I'm more than happy to. All right. Thank you so much, ma'am. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. <laughs> Bye, yeah. everybody. Okay. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah. Wow. What an amazing um, session there with God's servant, my dear sister, Mrs. Amaze Obodeze. Always exciting to have her with us. If you're just coming in now, you've missed a whole lot. But the good news is you can always rewatch this um, session. Um, immediately we are done. We're going to be saving it on our pages and you can get to assess it on our pages. We've talked a lot about um, narcissism. You know, we talked about um, ego, pride, and arrogance, and all of that. It's been, it's been so great. So many things we've talked about. Don't worry, Faith. Yeah, you missed. But then, it's always going to be um, saved there. Yeah. So you can get to watch from the beginning, and then you can always get to ask your questions. You can even send her a DM. I'm sure um, Mrs. Amese will be on ground to, you know, assess you, you know, already, and also get to answer your questions. Thank you so much, Olori, for coming. Thank you, Dimo. I believe your questions are answered. If you cannot marry him, don't go ahead. It's not by force. Don't come back and say, sir, you, you are the one that uh, I and Mrs. Amese can said. I eventually married him because I thought he would change. And don't do that. Like yourself. Love your life. It is well. I I celebrate you. Mo, Muiwa. God bless you, everybody. Temi, I celebrate you. God bless you. Miss Foles, I celebrate you. Tomorrow by 5.30, we are going to be having an intentional session, a prayer session. Those of you that have been coming, I know you've always been blessed. We're going to be praying for our marriages, our businesses, our relationships, our career, our finances. Name it. It's always intentional. By 5.30, come around and let's pray together. Come in with your, um, your prayer request. Let us charge up in the month of December and um, commit all our ways into God's hands and believe God for a wonderful month of December and also, you know, the new year as well. And for those of you that um, are aware of my new book, The Lies of the Dating Face, there are certain things the Spirit of the Lord is laying in my heart to, you know, um, correct. There are certain impression that um, the Spirit of the Lord is giving to me, you know, to correct in this dimension of the dating phase. That is why you see people married and had a supposed successful dating phase for four, five years, six years, and they are still having issues in their marriages. The question is, is what were they doing in the dating phase? You see people who were friends for two weeks, three weeks, and they left that friendship phase and, and jumped into the dating phase and dated for as long as six years and are married and are having issues. This is why we want to talk about the lies of the dating phase. It's going to be on Amazon. It's going to be on Akada Books. It's going to be on Seller. And it's going to be on eBay. And there's going to be a physical copy that can be you know, distributed anywhere in the world. And of course, um, the pre-order dimension is going to be um, out soon. I'm going to start making announcement for the pre-order sales so that people can start ordering the book already. And it's going to come at um, you know, a discounted price different from the original price so that people can you know, get the book already. So please, it's not a book you want to miss out on. By God's grace, it's going to be out very soon. And we are making efforts. So kindly turn on your button notification here on Instagram so that you can be kept abreast with what we are doing concerning the book, you know, our post and stuff like that. Thank you so much, everyone, for your love. Thank you for your follow. Thank you for the vote of confidence. I appreciate you all. I celebrate you all. This means a lot to me. Thank you for always coming out for our live sessions. Don't miss them. We're going to be having many more live sessions this month, even in the new year and beyond. Just as you heard, I'm going to be having another session with our guest speaker, Ms. Amazing, and two more presence. It's going to be a you know quadruple on that very day, and God is God is going to help us. Don't forget tomorrow here yeah, by five thirty. Come on, let us pray. It's always going to be a very different dimension. We don't speak too much grammar on Sundays like that. We come to pray, very very intentional, and I know the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much. A big thanks to our guest speaker, Mrs. Amaze. Thank you so much, everyone. Until I come your way again tomorrow by 5.30,
by God's grace. Amen. Thank you so much for your prayers. I remind your friend in School of Counseling and Personal Finance, Stephen Adekun Ladiboye. God bless you all and see you at the top. See you tomorrow by 5.30. I love you all. God bless you and bye for now. Cheers.